What's happening guys and welcome back to the channel for today's video We're gonna be checking out the latest and possibly greatest Transformers and Jurassic Park crossover Autobot JP12 and Decepticon the Lothicon. now starting things off by checking out JP12 This guy looks fantastic So he is directly based on the vehicle that Dennis Nedry used in order to plot his escape off the park And I believe it's an officially licensed Jeep Wrangler Sahara and it does just look remarkable I mean the details here along the side are fantastic, but as we flip it around here to the back, check out those tiny little Jurassic Park details. Even up front, we get the winch which he used to try and pull this vehicle out of the mud within the film. So that is just fantastic. And one of the biggest geek out moments for me in regards to this is that the transformation hinge joint that you'll use to shift the backpack up does become some internal details for the vehicle mode. So you can see two seats up front as well as some here in the back, as well as a steering wheel slap bang and center for the driver's seat. So all in all, this thing looks terrific. And as we flip it here to the underside, all of the accessories that this pack includes for this guy can store away here on the base so that's awesome and all four wheels are pinned on so technically he shouldn't have any issues in escaping off the island unless he happens to bump into a Decepticon which talking of here we have Dilophicon aka the Dilophosaurus that we saw in the Jurassic Park movie most specifically when Dennis Nedry is killed off and this looks awesome to my knowledge I don't believe there ever was a Predacon Beast Wars Dilophosaurus back in the day so it is fantastic that we finally have the closest thing to that this time for this crossover and yeah the beast mode looks fantastic so as we check out the details personally I loved kind of the thrills or the wings that ejected out the side of her throat in the movie these look awesome you know the details are fantastic and both of these pieces are completely removable so if you wanted to kind of recreate the very first time that we saw the Dilophosaurus in the Jurassic Park movie then you can absolutely do that but because Hasbro has become no stranger to giving us Beast Wars figures whether it be based on live action or based on Transformers Kingdom the real Realistic texture detail that we have for the body looks incredible. I mean, check out that very scaly reptile like texture we have here for the top of the body, and in particular for the tail, it looks so cool. And I love the proportions of how the legs transform for the beast mode again, super accurate to how it showed up in the movie, so that's great. Now, in terms of our articulation, the jaw can open and close, so that's really awesome. These side pieces can also hinge out to the side, so if you want to look super aggressive, you can flare those out, which I thought was pretty cool. In terms of the tiny little arms, these are on ball joints, so these will move forwards and back and technically due to transformation these should lock into place but it's very easy to move them so we just hinge them out to the sides and you do get ball joints here for the hips and the ankles are fantastic so these can pivot forwards and backwards rock side to side as well as rotate the full 360 and finally due to her transformation the tail is on a hinge joint so you can hinge this up and down sadly no left to right movement but due to the way it transforms I kind of understand as to why that may have been an issue so let's check out her accessories which of course has to be the venomous blast effect and this looks great. Again, inspired by when she takes Dennis Nedry clean out in the movie. So that's fantastic. Completely cast in transparent blue with a nice bit of slimy green here on the tip. So yeah, in terms of her dino mode, I think she looks absolutely incredible. Now as we jump into a few comparisons, on the left we have JP12 compared to the right who is JP93 who was the original Transformers and Jurassic Park crossover and in terms of my own personal preference I much prefer the design of the Jeep than as opposed here to JP93 but both of them are incredibly detailed and very accurate to how their vehicles did appear in the movie so ultimately I do think it's going to come down to personal preference but overall as an actual action figure slash Transformer I do just think that JP12 is the superior in both modes which you guys will see in just a second. So yeah, that's roughly how these two fare. Here he is alongside the Transformers Legacy Detritus, which will become the Studio Series 86 Earth Mode Hound. And it's a night and day difference. I mean, Hasbro really should have sought after the official license of Jeep for this upcoming Hound Mold, because personally, I just think it absolutely pales in comparison to JP12. I mean, the details are just extraordinary on this JP12 figure when in comparison to what we saw from Detritus. So yeah, hands down in terms of an Earth Mode Jeep, this one absolutely is superior. And for a few Dilophicon comparisons, here he is compared alongside the JP12 alt form, just so you guys can see roughly how they scale. I do believe the Dilophicon is a little too oversized when in comparison to the actual scale that we saw in the movie, as this was actually able to fit inside the vehicle. But it's a Transformer, it's supposed to be a Decepticon. Having it bigger than the vehicle personally doesn't bother me whatsoever, and I don't think it would have been as detailed had they shrunk it down to the likes of a core class. So yeah, personally, I do think these look quite cool next to each other. 
And here is Dilophicon alongside a recent Beast Wars figure, that being the Studio Series Rise of the Beast Cheetor. So this is definitely a deluxe class in terms of its size, but I do still think it pairs pretty nicely here alongside the Cheetor. So definitely not a small deluxe by any stretch of the imagination. And then finally, here we have the Dilophicon alongside the big girl. Here we have Rexy, aka the Tyrannicon Rex, I think it was called, but basically the Kingdom Beast Wars Megatron mold. And as you guys can see, there is a significant difference in terms of the size, as there should be, because this is a deluxe class and this is a leader class. Now with the alt mode for both characters completely covered, let's get stuck into the transformation. So first up here we have JP12, who for a crossover is crazy involved. So the front set of tires, you're gonna wanna bring down until they click into place and then bring to the front until they snap into place. So do the same here for this side, bring this section here down, bring it to the front until it does click into place. Then flip here to the underside, take what will become the forearms and detach these tabs away from that central slot. So do the same here for this side. I then personally would recommend to take the wrists and rotate these here all the way around as this is the position that they'll need to be in for the robot mode we can then come back here to the front take the front fender hinge this section here up and do the exact same for this side so slide this piece up and then come around here to the back now personally this is my favorite part about the transformation because this is where the seats compress for the robot mode so take the entire top canopy and just begin wriggling it out of all of the tabs and as you guys can see the transformation hinge joint does then completely compress the front set of seats which I think is super cool we can then take the entire rear bumper as well as the spare tire slide this section down until it does snap into place what we'll then do is take these side doors hinge these here out to the sides and do the exact same here for this side and then you're going to want to completely split right down the middle the entire rear part of the vehicle now is where you can take what will become the shin guard of the robot mode hinge this here out to the side and then completely extend this hinge joint now flip around to what will become the front of the robot mode snap this section into place and on the back of the leg is in fact the robot mode foot so detach that bring this here all the way down until it does snap into place and rinse and repeat the same process here for this side. So take this shin guard, hinge this here all the way out just like that, fully extend the knee joint, flip around here to the front, snap that section there into place, take the robot mode foot, bring it away from the back of the leg until this does snap into place and then for a finishing touch in terms of the lower part of this guy just take the crotch plate and slide that in now personally I would recommend to then take the ball jointed shoulders and hinge these here out to the sides because they can be an absolute pain in the butt in terms of clearance of the whole upper part of the body now this next step can definitely be kind of tricky so what you're going to want to do is take the entire front part of the truck and bring it here all the way up now nine times out of ten these little beige tabs will actually catch on this gray transformation hinge joint so just slide this section down and it should allow enough clearance for this entire chest piece to come all the way down until it does snap into place just like that what we can then do is bring these door wings to the front these tabs here are going to slide into the back of the backpack just like this we can then take this red section slide this section down and then take the front bonnet part of the vehicle and slide this piece here backwards and on the inside of this gray joint is a tiny little tab which if you extend all the way up should slide into this slot so snap that in there and do the exact same here for this side and there is the base dennis nedry aka jp12 fully transformed into his robot mode Next up, let's turn to the transformation for the Lophicon, which is way more straightforward when in comparison to JP12. So first up, you're going to want to take the towel and just completely wriggle this section here clean off. What we can then do is take the thighs of the dino mode, hinge this here out to the side and do the same here for this section. And something which I thought was really cool is basically the thigh pad of the dino mode will now become the shin pad of the robot mode. So we will hinge this here all the way down on this double pin joint until it does snap into place. We can then bring the hip joints down, do the exact same here for this side so take that fire pad bring it here all the way down until it does snap into place and again completely straighten that out what we can then do is take what is left of the dino motel and basically just leave it looking like this for now as we're going to come here to what will become the forearms and detach these away from her crotch plate or his crotch plate really and truly i'm not too sure of the gender of this specific transformer but then we can take what will become his or her shoulders in robot mode and flare these here out to the sides and i really like this piece of engineering so we're then going to take 
the entire front part of the dino head and extend this section here forwards and then take what is left of the head and bring this section here all the way back just like that. So basically it completely explodes, which I thought was really cool. We can then poke out the robot mode head all the way up just like that and then compress all of these hinge joints in upon themselves to form the main chest piece of the robot mode. The next step would be to then take these fins, flare these here out to the sides to allow for enough clearance so that we can collapse this here in upon itself and then snap this here back into place and that is pretty much Dilophicon fully transformed into his robot mode. And bang! So first up here we have JP12, or as I like to refer to him as in this form, basically Dennis Nedry as Hasbro have taken that character and essentially turned it into a transformer because as we take a closer look at the details, considering the face has been super mechanized, it still does have a pretty striking resemblance to the actual Dennis Nedry character. So I thought that was a great touch. You know, the details on this pack are just fantastic. But I also like the hard top hat with a really nice Jurassic Park logo slap bang and center. And Dennis Nedry was most most definitely a heavier character in the movie so it would make sense for the transformer to be a little chubbier in terms of design so I really do like how the front wheels do become the kind of gut section of the robot mode that is super nicely done I think the arms look great as so do the legs and the plastic quality and the tolerances on this figure in particular feel excellent nothing feels brittle nothing feels cheap and nothing feels loose which is awesome now as we spin him here to the side he does have a massive backpack because this is basically the entire top canopy of the vehicle mode I think it would have been cool to have made Maybe been given the option to remove this and perhaps transform it into a shield that would have been pretty neat but to be fair i do think overall this robot mode is way stronger when in comparison to jp93 so as we check out the articulation the head is on a ball joint this can look up and down as well as rotate left to right on a very sturdy ball joint and i mean check out the tiny little mic piece that he has there to the left hand side of the face that is so cool the shoulders can rotate the full 360 hinge out to the sides you can also use the transformation joint to get a slightly better range so that's awesome the door wings can flare forward and backwards very similar to some of the live action movie bumblebee figures the bicep can rotate all the way around the elbows can bend to 90 we do get wrist rotation due to how he transforms nothing in the waist but the front skirt piece can hinge forwards to allow the hips to kick forwards that far as well as back to i'd say roughly about that far so not the greatest but definitely not the worst they can also kick out to the sides we get a great fire rotation 90 degree bend there in the knee and the ankle articulation is amazing so not only can this hinge up and down but the pivot going left to right is so cool so it can actually pivot in both directions, which is something that you don't always see on a Generations Transformers figure. So overall, in terms of detail and articulation, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. I do think overall this guy's excellent, and he shares no reused pieces from any of the previous Hasbro Transformers. This is a complete brand new mold from the ground upwards. So I am hoping to see this perhaps revisited in the future. For an Earth Mode Hound, I do think this overall could be a pretty strong basis. But let's check out his accessories. And already you guys are looking at two. So first up, he does come with this hat, which is removable. If you didn't want to attach this onto this guy, then you could completely remove it. And that does reveal some additional details. And with it removed, personally, I think this looks even more like the character of Dennis Nedry. So yeah, that's really fantastic. And the entire winch is also removable. So we can wriggle this section here off to, I imagine, create either a blaster or perhaps some kind of harpoon weapon. So that is really awesome. And then he also includes the iconic shaving foam canister. Now, this is such a nice touch. It really does go to show that Hasbro poured a lot of detail into this guy because it's not just a regular shaving foam canister. It's kind of like a Russian doll because you can slide this entire top section off to reveal the embryo canister. I do believe Dennis Nedry was stealing the embryos from the lab. So that is such a fantastic attention to detail. This has been fully cast in transparent blue, which personally I think looks awesome. So overall, in terms of accessories for JP12, aka Dennis Nedry, I definitely think this guy is packing. Next up, we check out Dilophicon, who, much like JP12, also has a striking resemblance to a character, although one not based on Jurassic Park, but instead Transformers, because the robot mode is near enough a one-to-one -one match to the Beast Wars character of Iguanus. Now, whether or not eventually this will be retooled into a Beast Wars Iguanus is yet to be seen, considering that transformed into an Iguana, whereas this one transforms into a Dilophosaurus. I'm thinking maybe it was just a nice Easter egg for Transformers fans, but in terms of detail, 
out. I think it looks so cool. I mean, the face sculpt is so wickedly awesome. They're titling this as a Decepticon, but I guess technically it would be a Predacon, but it looks awesome. I do like the way how the dino head does become the chest piece, and the details throughout this guy are actually pretty awesome. And also the leg design, you know, the way the five panels of the dino mode do become the shins here for the bot mode, I think is awesome. And for the most part, it's a very streamlined figure, with the exception of basically the bottom part of the tail. You know, if they were going to remove the tail, they really should have removed the entire thing, as that back piece does look a little ugly, I'm not going to lie, but... Yeah, overall, the robot mode looks great. Now, in terms of articulation, the head is on a very sturdy ball joint. You know, much like JP12, all of the joints feel excellent. So it can rotate before 360 and look up and down slightly. The shoulders also have the same amount of articulation, although technically due to transformation, we get this awesome butterfly joint. So I thought that was pretty cool. We have ball joints here for the elbows. So no hinge joints, which is a little strange on a Generations figure, but that also technically acts as the bicep swivel. Nothing in the wrist, nothing in the waist, although the hips can kick way past 90. Back to that far out to the sides. We also get a hinge joint here at the knee. Technically, thigh swivel, so that's really cool. And as I mentioned previously, the articulation for the ankles is just awesome, so this can rock back and forth, as well as side to side. So, overall, in terms of his robot mode, his articulation, much like JP12, it is another knockout, in my opinion. Now, as we check out his accessories, here we have the tail that we removed previously. So all you're going to want to do here is basically take the tip end and flip this here all the way up. And bang, there you have his forearm cannon, which again is a direct throwback to Beast Wars Iguanas. But some really nice metallic gun metal here up front. And it also does have a massive port. And that's because you can attach the venomous blast effect onto the tip, which I thought was pretty awesome. But to be fair, I don't think the effect looks nowhere near as good in robot mode as it did in the beast mode. And it's also quite a loose fit as well so I personally would not recommend to leave this like this on display as with the slightest bump it may very quickly find its demise and you guys may never be able to find it again but yeah I mean I guess the tail weapon does the trick and again is meant to be a throwback to Beast Wars Iguanas. So, as we check out a few robot mode comparisons, on the left-hand side, we have JP12, compared to the right, which is JP93. So, as I mentioned previously, I think overall, JP12 is a much better figure. It really does feel as if, though, there's been a massive step up in terms of engineering and quality between the two crossover releases, because, hands down, JP12's robot mode, in my opinion, it destroys what we saw from JP93. And when this was released, I really liked the way it looks, but when you compare them, it does just appear to be super super simple and almost KO-like in terms of its design in comparison. And here is how he sizes up alongside the Legacy Detritus. Now, just listen to this idea for a second. We know from Transformers Legacy that Hasbro love to mash up designs. So imagine if they take this JP12 and kind of blend the live action movie hound along with the G1 hound design. So for example, you would have the Jeep mode, which would be a great throwback to G1 hound. And then when you were transforming in robot mode, because this robot's design is a little bigger build when in comparison to most Transformers, I think this would be a great base for kind of giving a homage to the Age of Extinction Hound. I mean, it's just an idea, but personally, I think it's one that I would love to see replicated, and it would also give them a second opportunity in revisiting this mold. So, yeah, I honestly wouldn't mind seeing legacy live-action movie figures. I think that could be quite interesting. And here for a few Dilophicon comparisons, here is how he stacks up alongside JP12. And for a Beast Wars throwback, here we have the Rise of the Beast Deluxe Air Razor. So, this guy's definitely a pretty decent size for a Deluxe class. A little smaller when in comparison to the Studio Series Deluxe, but still not far off at all. And then finally, the previous crossover, that being Tyrannicon Rex, which is basically, as I said previously, the Kingdom Megatron repainted and slightly modified. So, much like in the case of JP12, this is most definitely, in my opinion, a better crossover figure when in comparison to this one, as this does not reuse any pieces which we have previously seen. It is a complete brand new mold, which is why I am kind of hoping that maybe eventually we will see an Iguanus out of it, because the robot mode most definitely is there. But you guys let me know down below, out of the two, which is the one you guys prefer. Now let's get stuck into the reverse transformation. So to kickstart things off with, come around here to the back, take this section here and just fold this section here down. What we can then do is take these three pieces and basically bring this here all the way to the back, take the robot mode head sculpt, slide this section here in and then come to the chest plate and completely extend all of these hinge joints here out. And then what you guys are going to want to do is take these sections hinge them upwards just to create for enough clearance so that we can then flip this section here forwards, snap this section there into place, and as you guys can see, we do get a little slot there that should smack itself into that tab. So 
just line all of this up just like this, snap that there into place, and then slide the head backwards just like that. What you'll then want to do is utilize the butterfly joints, which I showcased previously, bring these inwards, and this little tab is going to find itself pegging into the crotch piece. So snap that section in, do the exact same here for this side. So snap that section into place. We can then take the hip joints, bring these here forwards, just like this. And then you're going to want to take the shin guards, disengage these here away and then as you bring these sections here upwards rotate here at the knee so that when this piece here does come over it should hopefully perfectly line up with this tab so snap that there into place now technically this tiny little groove should slide into that tab but nine times out of ten it will disengage so just as long as you have it kind of resting there you should be pretty good to go so do the same here on this side take the shin guard pull it away bend here at the knee just like this Collapse this section up and over, snap that there into place, and then slide that tiny little tab into that slot. We can then take this section here, bring it to the back, and now is where you're going to want to bring in the tail. So we can slide this section here all the way over the top, take the very tip of the tail, slide this down until that snaps into place, and there is Dilophocon fully transformed into his dino mode. And then next up we have JP12 who is way more involved. Now technically you can transform this guy with all of the accessories attached although as you may have noticed previously I unfortunately have quite a few scratches on the top of this hat and it's because the clearance between the hat and kind of this chest piece when you're transforming is minimal. So to prevent any paint chipping personally I would recommend to just set this here off to the side and keep an eye on it. Just don't lose it but don't tab it on unless you want the paint unfortunately to be a little scuffed up. So first of all you're going to want to take the wrists rotate these here around so the back is now facing the front do the exact same here for this side so rotate this section here all the way around just like that the next step would be to then angle these door wings here to the front we can then take the backpack disengage this here away take this panel bring this here forwards and then take this red section and flip this here all the way to the back the next step would be to then take these gray hinge joints and detach these away from these shoulder fenders so slide these here all the way down and do the exact same here for this side. So slide this section here down. Now once you've done that, that should allow enough clearance for us to take the entire upper part of the chest and shift it backwards to kind of recreate the front part of the vehicle mode. So slide this here all the way up. We can then take the front bonnet, snap this section here down. Now previously, I kind of showcased this as being the very first step. So technically it should be the last step, but you can do it now, it really doesn't matter. So take the wheels, angle these here outwards and then slide these pieces here inwards, slide the fender section down so do the same here for this side slide this section until it clicks into place shift it upwards slide the fender section here down now what you're going to want to do is take this front skirt piece slide this section here forwards take these shoulders and hinge these here out to the sides just to allow for additional clearance as now what we're going to do is take the feet and rotate these here all the way around to the back until they snap into place so do the same here for this side bring this here all the way to the back until it clicks into place. We can then take the shin guards, angle these here out to the sides, split the legs again right down the middle, and now you're basically going to want to fold the knee joint back upon itself just like this, and then what we can do is snap this section over the top, just like that. We can then straighten this piece and do the exact same on the opposite side. So take the shin guard, flare this here out to the side, bend that knee joint in upon itself just like that, and then fold this shin guard here up and over. We can then combine the two halves. So make sure those tabs are very securely locked into place just like this. The next step would be to then take these ball jointed shoulders, bring them here inwards, bend at the elbow, and this tiny little slot should slide there into that tab. So snap that in there and do the exact same here for this side. So snap that there into place. We can then take the doors, line these up here with the rear fenders, and then for a few finishing touches, take this rear bumper, slide this section here out just like this, and then collapse this section here back upon itself until all of those tabs do snap into place and then as we flip this here to the underside we can then take the shaving foam canister and it should slide into this section just like that and there we have JP12 fully transformed into his vehicle mode.
And so, wrapping up on this review for the Transformers, Jurassic Park crossover, JP12 and Dilophicon. Overall, I think these are two excellent figures. I mean, the details in particular are really what ultimately set this set apart when in comparison to the previous Jurassic Park crossover. But we have to talk about pricing. Here in the UK, this retails for over £70, which for two deluxes, ultimately I just find to be astronomical. Now, they are very well made, they are very well detailed, but I still just think for two deluxes, £70, quid is way too much and if the past Jurassic Park and Transformers crossover was anything to go by I'm pretty certain that in the future that price is most definitely at least going to be slashed in half so if these are two figures which you are not clamoring for then personally I would most definitely recommend to wait for a sale. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this down in the comment section below what other crossovers would you guys like to see Hasbro approach in the future and until my next video I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.